Okay, I'm Corbin Brown from Wynn, Arkansas. We farm about 3,000 acres of rice and soybeans. My name's uh, David Eldridge uh, from Forest City, Arkansas. We farm just outside of uh, Forest City and Widener. Uh, we've used the Versatile for uh, the last couple of years now and uh, we've thoroughly enjoyed it. Nathan Reed, uh, farmer uh, farm soybeans, cotton, corn, rice, grain sorghum, wheat, rye here in uh, eastern Arkansas and Lee and St. Francis counties. We have a, a 35 foot desk we pull with it, a 46 desk or tillage tool, deep tillage, what I call deep tillage, probably shallow, deep for our part of the world. Uh, they are good power, good match for that tractor, especially 46. We're not lacking for power. Uh, we have a, a DMI we pull with it. It'll get up and yank that thing like it's supposed to. Does a real good job for it behind it with the power we got. We have a what we call land planes of floats but it's about 16 foot wide. They're really, the tractor's really overpowered for that job, but you know, you, you kind of go with what you got and it allows us to get across the ground pretty quick and we can get good speed with, with the extra power. Yeah, better over than under, always, always want more. And uh, it's a good economical value for the, for the power, we felt like. This is our, actually I'll be our third year with the, with the Versatile 575. We use it a lot in the fall for, uh, for uh, deep tillage uh, behind our corn. And then we'll uh, use it again in the spring with uh, about a 42 foot field cultivator for primary tillage and uh, for, for seed uh, bed preparation. But it's primarily used in the fall for deep tillage, uh, chisel plows, uh, the, uh, the, the dominator, all the deep shank tools, and then used again in the spring for uh, seed bed preparation. Oh, it's great. The, the versatile will get us across the ground. It's quick, it uh, rides good, it's powerful, it's got a lot of torque. It uh, sticks to the ground, and, it'll, and all the all the uh, implements that we've pulled with the versatile, it uh, it's hands down uh, far more horsepower and a better riding tractor, and it'll actually cover cover ground very very quickly and efficiently. The versatile has a field cruise setting for 1600 to 1800 RPM, so we've got more torque using less fuel, and um, and we like that. Anytime we can save save that fuel. And that's that's a good thing for us. So we uh, we can we have the field crews for the Dominator and uh, 1600 to 1800 RPMs, and uh, with more torque and, and better fuel efficiency, we we, we enjoy that. Oh, uh, it's good. It's uh, the the versatile sticks to the ground. We we out here in Arkansas we refer to it as power hopping. I don't know if that's what they refer to it everywhere else, but we uh, it'll stick to the ground, and no matter what we put it, pull it. What we pull with it, it sticks to the ground and it rides, it rides good. Best riding tractor as far as uh, field work. It's great. First nine green tractor I've ever had on the farm. I say that Hobbs is probably the, one of the better dealers in the country as far as service. I mean, they, they've kind of built their reputation on service and have been very pleased with that. And then, uh, I guess, secondary, the, the the tractor has, has been good. You know, we, we haven't had any major catastrophic failures on anything, whereas a lot of my green tractors I have, and you talk about a much lower initial cost. Uh, it, so the actual power and pulling ability, there's no comparison. The versatile will out pull anything out there, I feel. Some of the issues we had, especially uh, with, with dirt moving, uh, with the, the other equipment, uh, and the price, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a cheaper price point and uh, a lot simpler. Uh, I feel like a lot of this equipment has gotten too complex uh, where it's, it's very hard for me to run, much less any, any hired help. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, I, I like the design of the Versatile, how the, the, the systems are separate, where everything's not tied together. All the hydraulics and rear ends are, are separate systems. Uh, you know, uh, when you get into big engines, a lot of times the competition is running a 12, 5, 13 liter engine. Uh, whereas the Versatile has a 15 liter uh, and they're really, when you get in the high horsepower applications, lugging ability, uh, the other tractors just can't compete. They may have the same horsepower, but they sure don't, sure are, are not able to, uh, to compete out in the field with it. Uh, that and then the Caterpillar transmission also, uh, but high horsepower four wheel drive applications. 
uh, you can have issues with transmissions. And I think that the Caterpillar transmission with the Cummins engine is probably the best combination on the market right now. Pull power, traction, uh, you know, I feel the, the tractor's weighted and, and has very good traction. Uh, the, the lugging ability, you know, when you, when you really get into these, uh, that's, that's the thing. This tractor just, just keeps going. Uh, it doesn't ever seem to, you, you can lug it and it just pulls right through and it keeps moving along. So, yes, I've driven it quite a bit myself and it, it's, uh, it's definitely smoother riding. Uh, it seems to be better balanced, better traction, uh, and just be able to handle things a lot better. Well, we've been running uh, this actual same dirt pan on a, on a John Deere 9630 tractor and had some rear end issues and, and a lot of expenses and it just never really pulled it to I thought it's full potential. Uh, so I purchased one of these. I was looking to upgrade anyway, so I purchased this tractor and uh, it, it definitely, uh, it, it just, generally before we had trouble filling the pan over half full, whereas this tractor will top it off. So it's definitely a lot, a lot better machine for the, for the task. Uh, but it's it's definitely been above and beyond any other tractor I've ever had on a on a scraper. It does the job. The controls are very user friendly. It's a little bit different, but it, uh, we've we've learned how to use it, and we it's more sensitive, which I like. It's smooth. The way they've got the gears, the very small increments, so there's not a lot of jerking and jumping. It's a uh, it's very smooth transition from gear to gear. The traction is, is uh, bar none, it's, it uh, does, a, does a great job. Of course, this one has the huge draw bar on it, and we hooked up to our 42 foot field cultivator, and we, we took it out in the field and set, we just set sail. And uh, the way that they've got the draw bar towards the front of the tractor and the way they've got it attached, it's pulling that. It's pulling down as opposed to pulling back, and so it really, it really does a good job. You know, you want tough and high horsepower, and that's that's what this tractor is. It, it's tough and simple and, and high horsepower and, and easy easy to fix. You, you know, you got you're running this tractor daily. You need ease of certain daily serviceability. We've got the auto greaser on it, so so really, I mean, our morning ritual consumes of just checking the fluid levels and, and going. Uh, so that, you know, whereas my other tractors, we're spending 30 minutes in the morning on average greasing and, and servicing the tractors. So the fluid coupler between the motor and the transmission, the deer, it can be up to a twenty, thirty thousand dollar $30,000 job from the amount of carnage it, it produces when it goes out. And then also just the, the even if it does not do the damage, it's a, it's a two to three week job in the shop to replace it. The same thing happened on this tractor and it was literally a two hour job to replace it. So it seems like the tractor is laid out easier for maintenance and even, even catastrophic failures of components. This tractor seems to be easier, if, if that was the case, to, to get serviced and get back in the field after a major repair. Uh, I actually like, for, for our application, I like the outboard planetary uh, axles. Uh, I feel like in a real high horsepower, high draft application where you do have rear end issues or, or troubles, uh, the, the inboard planetaries, it's, it's, it's a disaster when you have an issue with one of those because everything's tied together. That's, that was my problem with my 9630. The inboard planetary goes out, it dumps on the rear end and takes your whole rear end out. Whereas this, uh, you just replace the planetary. So I do like that design, again, back to the simplicity. All the systems aren't tied together, so you, if you have a hydraulic pump go out, it doesn't get in your rear ends and get everywhere else, uh, or you have a rear end go out, it doesn't get all through the tractor system and, and destroy every component in the tractor. I like the isolation that's designed into these. We, uh, we do service, and one of the things I do like about it, it does have the self-greasing system. So we've, we have it set up for every two hours. It's got an automatic greaser on it. So every pin and, and, and uh, joint's got a, uh, got a grease cert on there. So every two hours it gets a little shot of grease. We're all John Deere and uh, when they brought the uh, Versatile out, we were excited, we were a little bit anxious as well. Not knowing, we just didn't know uh, about the Versatiles down here in this part of the country. They uh, haven't seen them that much, but um, we were very uh, pleased and, and uh, once we got in the field and started going, it, it, it's unbelievable. I, uh, it, it pulls, as far as, you know, the big tractors like these compared to the John Deere's, there's, there's no comparison, especially the price. The price is one of the biggest things that, that drew us to that and uh, uh, that, was, that was one of the biggest things. You can, 
uh, save quite a bit of money on a versatile and have the same horsepower, the same torque, and uh, it does, does a great job. It's lower operating cost per hour, lower maintenance cost. Uh, it, it definitely makes me more money. I mean, whereas, you know, it, a lot of times uh, the green tractors, I mean, the average lifespan of a tractor, five to 6,000 hours, uh, you're probably gonna have 10 to $20 less an hour, I would imagine, at the end of that in, in one of these machines. So. Oh, it rides great and doesn't, doesn't toss you around as bad and the transmission shifts, shifts smooth. And uh, so it's, it's definitely an improvement over the deer tractor. It rides a lot better. It's not as jerky. Doesn't seem to be as jerky and the, the deer transmissions are pretty jerky. They toss you around. And, and again, back to the lugging ability, a, a deer, they seem to peak the crest and they fall off so fast and then it kicks into neutral and throws you against the, the glass. Whereas this has enough power, it pulls through the lug and it, unless you just really lug it, it doesn't kick off into neutral. And one thing that we really enjoy about this tractor is being able to run it at 1800 RPM. When you run those smaller engines at 2200 RPMs all day, it feels like somebody's just sitting there screaming in your ear the whole day. I guess a better operator experience. We're seeing more and more of them. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of farmers are going to them and I've, I've, I've had nothing but a positive experience with, with my dealer, with the tractor. Uh, I, I, I've been extremely pleased and hopefully I'll, I'll probably be going to a few more versatiles in the next few years.